Okay, here we go. All right, man, we back with another video, man. You guys, if you would, take a chance to uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit that subscribe button if you are new. Um, listen, man, um, let me say this before we get into the, the uh, minutia of the, the, of the discussion. I don't want to turn this into a Bronny James hate channel. I don't want to scrutinize everything Bronny's doing to lambaste him, to make him seem like basically he's the worst thing ever. That's not my intent. My intent is to cover topics as they come available. And right now, if we're just keeping it trill, you look down, you know, all your social media platforms, Bronny James is the, the trending topic. So <laughs> I'd be remiss not to speak about what I see. So today's subject matter is going to be about one Jalen Brown, your finals MVP, the NBA champion, who actually came to the game with his girlfriend, Kaiser Gundesrick, I probably butchered that, and Angel Reese. So they came to see Bronny play. You know, and um, he had a less than stellar performance against the Celtics in a Vegas summer league, putting up a whopping two points, three rebounds, shooting one for five from the, the field goal. He had three fouls, but I don't care about that. So, and, and the, the thing is, this is becoming a recurring theme. Every game, he's putting up very lackluster performances, and he's getting like 20-plus minutes per game. And so, in fact, when we look down his whole entire summer, which accounts for like five games, he's averaging 4.3 points. 3.8 rebounds, 1.5 assists, shooting 0 for 15 from three, and shooting 17, I'm sorry, seven for 31, but good for 23% for the entire summer league, and also 1.3 steals. You know, let's go ahead and give him his card on there. But listen, film don't lie. Film don't lie. This is what Scouts have been saying. That's what his numbers have been saying since SC. Like, this is not breaking news. This is who Bronny James is, but, 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 Let's keep this on the subject matter at hand. Jalen Brown got a little hot water because, as you see right here, that he said that he seemed mouthing to his girlfriend, Kaiser, that um, I don't think Bronny's a pro. Now, <clears throat> on his face, the in, again, let's unpack this properly. The finals MVP and a recent NBA champion, he can't speak his mind. He can't tell you what he sees from a product in the court. I think if anybody's a good talent evaluator, it would be Jalen Brown, Right. And so, now listen, the mob don't play. <laughs> the mob don't play. Now, if you was your boy, I understand 11 toes down. I ain't got 11 of those, those bad boys, man. I would have stood down all, I would have double, triple, quadruple down on what I meant because I mean what I say when I speak. Right now, can I be wrong and, and can I admit I'm wrong? Yeah, of course. I mean, we're human. But on something like this where it's, it's evaluation, it's, it's still up for debate on some level, I'm not backing off anything I say. If that's what I see, that's what I see. Now, I understand that Jalen Brown is, is, you know, he's a professional-minded guy. If you ever hear him speak, he, he's a brilliant guy. Like, he uh, graduated from Berkeley, and he has aspirations to do things in the um, the physics field or something like that. So, you guys check it on your own, man. He, he's a very, very brilliant guy. And I know that him and his team probably saw the blowback, and it's like, yeah, we don't want no part of that. So, he actually went back on Twitter to uh, comment on one of the um, on one of the articles on Twitter that talked about him mouthing that Bronny's not a pro. And he said, it's a flex to have your son alongside you in the NBA. It reflects greatness and longevity. Bronny has all the tools around him to be successful. I look forward to watching his growth. Boy, that is PR all the way, baby. <laughs> That's PR all the way. But listen, everybody ain't built for the smoke like that. And some players, you know, with again, with like me, 11 toes down, you only got 10 of them bad boys. I would have said, yeah, I said what I meant. Um, no offense. I don't think he's a bad kid. That's just what I think. So, and that's the problem right now. So, that sentiment is why a lot of people are making these, you know, videos about Bronny because what you are selling us is not what we're seeing on the court, right? So, some people are trying to play it both ways. Like, oh, why y'all care so much about a 50-50 pick? Or why do you, um, why is a 50-50 pick, why you worry about him so much, but not the, you know, Number one pick, or, or Alex Saar, or why are you not looking at those guys? You know why? Scroll down, doggone NBA's um, timeline, ESPN's timeline, Bleach Report's uh, timeline. They're not talking about these kids. So, like the old school said a long time ago, man, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. So you can't you can't expect you know um, people who are not getting the highlight to get the scrutiny. I saw a thing, you know, Rob Dillingham went like 0 for 12 uh, two games ago before he had a really good game two days ago. But people were trying to juxtapose that like, oh, well, y'all not talking about Rob having a bad game, but y'all focus on Bronny. I would challenge anyone to find Rob Dillingham post 
Yes, he's a higher pick. Yes, he will have the better pro career, but you couldn't tell by ESPN's coverage, right? So if that's the case, let's be honest with these discussions. And so Jalen Brown is the latest to say what we all have been seeing, what we all been knowing if you don't have allegiance to LeBron. You know, for those that do, I mean, I get it, man. Listen, if Kobe had a kid, I'd probably be a little biased too. That's just, you know, it is what it is. Well, like a, a basketball, a, a male kid playing basketball. I know he has, you know, his daughters, you know, beside the one that passed and, and rest peace, Gigi. But, you know, I, I would, there would be an element of bias that would be very hard for me to eliminate. So I get it. But at the same time, you're not going to hush me because I'm just telling you what I see. I'm just telling you the truth. So one thing I appreciate over here on this side of the world is authenticity. And if you, again, you scroll down Bleach Report, you scroll down to ESPN, you're going to see article after article after article of Brian James getting a deflection. Or like, not even necessarily the article, but you'll see like highlights of Bronny getting a reverse layup. I'm like, for real? Now, he had a good, now let me give him a little bit of flowers. Uh, he had a good, he's only two points of last night. Uh, he, he shot a buzzer beater, drifting three, uh, two-pointer mid-ranger. And it was nothing but uh, bottoms. But the thing is, when you watch the rest of his play, run, run to the side, you know, running to uh, the left side of the court and just kind of hanging out. That's just not going to get it done. If you're telling me he's a tweener, he, he has to be a point guard as well. We're talking about a kid that, uh, just from my own observations, I've never really seen him dominate the level. I've never seen him just take over. Um, and so when I look at, you know, I read you down those stats, guys, that's pretty much what he did at SC. Film don't lie. So for those who try to call people haters who don't necessarily like the way someone plays or haters because you're being honest, and I got to say, man, clutch sports must be extremely, extremely powerful, man, because I watch sports show after sports show. And even guys like Paul Pierce, who were the ultimate keep it real guys, they won't touch that with a 10-foot pole, man. I watch Gil and them. They won't touch it with a 10-foot pole, man. They give Brian the most glowingly um, benefit of doubt that I've seen, like, from any player in quite some time who just needs some time to develop. And that's what I think Brian James is. He needs time to develop. And I've talked to a lot of basketball minds, so this is not hoop jogging hating and just saying this. I Because what I always do when I have like a pretty finite opinion, I call people who I trust, people who coach Division One, people who coach who coach at the professional level, scouts at the professional level. I like, yo, am I out of pocket with this tape? And listen, the reviews, <laughs> there's no one who's giving me pushback. So I'm inclined to think that what I'm feeling how can, how can you say, <laughs> I'm just saying what the coach is feeling. <laughs> this is what the coach is feeling. If you don't have invested emotions in LeBron James, then this is what you're watching. We're not, I mean, last time I checked, my my vision was 2020. So I'm not sitting here trying to land base this kid. I'm just telling you what I see. So that's all we got on this one, man. I don't want to belabor this any longer, man. Thank y'all for turning up and showing up on the channel. If you guys hit the like button, subscribe if you are new. You know the game, man. I'll see y'all next video. Peace.